All right, so if we continue to look at the book, there's going to be a section about um, uh, backlinks to backlinks, which is a strategy um, that this is also one of the reasons why we want backlinks. Um, they call it backlinks to backlinks. I call it hyping links, H-Y-P-I-N-G, hyping. What I'm, what I'm saying is um, if we know what links point to our site, then we could boost those links via our own social media. So the point is, some website, quality website, uh, had a link to our website. Now what we're going to do then, now that we know that that, link, that that website links to our website, on our Twitter and our Facebook and our Pinterest and such, we're going to link to their page. That will then get them more traffic, which gets us more traffic. We're hyping those links. We wouldn't know who's linking to our site until we looked that up on Google Analytics, which I'll show you in a moment. But this is also another important thing to talk about regarding backlinks. Yes, you know you've got backlinks. What do we do with them? We hype those links. We make links to those links. We find someone's link, we share it on Facebook and Twitter and such, and then that in turn is going to give us a trickle-down effect and get more links to our site. The inverse of that also works, unfortunately. Question over there, ladies? Question? The reverse of that is also true. Spammy links that are linking to your site could drag down your SEO. As I said, these search engines are more about guilty until proven innocent. So if you've got a lot of links pointing to your site that are low quality, that are unrelated, that are spam sites, you're going to get caught up in their, in their negative SEO. You're going to be dragged down too, unfortunately. Question? So that explains like when I go to my Instagram, and then it's like there's like, uh, oh, like, let's say a post. I didn't put it in. I'm like, how do you just put it on my site? And it's like that. You mean a comment? A comment on your Instagram posts? I don't know where it is Instagram. I think it's, um, I think it's Pinterest. Pinterest. But I think it's Pinterest. Like, I think it's Pinterest. But it is not related to my um, company. And it's some. So most likely it's a comment. Most likely it's some spam comment it's like on some your content. It's like about lose weight or something, and it's, it pops up when you look at my stuff. Yeah, again, that's, uh, that's the spam comments. If it's on your Pinterest, you have the ability to, to delete comments, I believe, on Pinterest. How do you do that? Well, uh, we're getting into the terms of how to use Pinterest. That's best for the, for the social media class. During the lab, we can look at your particular case, but if you need to uh, know how to manage your own particular social media, that's what the social media class is for, and then I can help you during the, during the breaks. But the point here is that you might be getting bad links or spam comments on your content linking to your site. That could give you negative SEO that could drag you down. So fortunately, we have the ability to disavow links. We have the ability to tell Google and Bing, these links are bad. Don't pay attention to them. This is not going to remove the link. You don't have control over someone else's site. You cannot remove the link. But you can tell both Google and Bing to disavow those links, to say, don't pay attention to these links. Don't let them hurt my ranking. You know, don't take them into account. There's a disavow tool for both Google and Bing, um, which we should have time to look at. But this is how then you deal with bad links. Good links, you're going to hype them. You're going to create links to those links to help then get traffic to you. Bad links, you're going to disavow them. You would not know you have bad links until you set up webmaster tools, would you? How would you know who's linking to my site? You may be surprised but then you've got links from these weird um, spam sites like uh, freebuttonsforyou.net. Like, what is that about? We'll probably see a few of those because I've been seeing in some of our client sites that kind of site, that exact site, has been starting to make the rounds and make spam links. 
So what we want to do then is disavow these links and we'll see how to do that. Okay, so those are the big ideas I'm going to take from that book at the moment. The other pages, uh, again, I would recommend you get the book. I don't know the author. I don't get a kickback from recommending it, but I do, I have read the book, those, those books. I like them, um, and I recommend that you get a copy of them for yourself. The digital one is good because then, again, you could look it up, make notes, read it on your web browser, read it on your phone, and you get the updated version when it's updated. I'm going to log into Google Analytics. Well, I'm going to log into Bing Webmaster first, and then I'm going to log into Google Analytics and show you uh, where you would see those backlinks. If you'd like to do this, you can, or if not, just follow along for a moment. Bing.com slash toolbox. It's on my notes from the last one, actually. I don't have a new sheet of notes at the moment, but if you look at the notes from the previous lesson, there is a little section there about backlinks, so I'm just going to show you what my note has. Yes. So let's say I'm going to load up one of these clients' sites. Inside Bing, you're looking at your particular site, and then on the left side, you've got the, the sidebar, and you've got under the section of reports and data, inbound links. So they call it inbound links. This is what's the profile over the last 30 days, over 700 links. This shows that the home page has 672 links pointing to it. This blog post has 50, the menu has 29, etc. So you can then click on one of those and it'll tell you specifically. Here's a link from the LA Weekly, 10 Great Flans in Los Angeles. Here's one from KCRW, they're a, a radio station, I believe. Uh, best barbacoa in LA, vegetarian for Passover, etc. San Diego Reader, their article about Tacotopia. San Diego Eater, the 38 essential San Diego restaurants, April. 20, uh, April 15th. So these are the links. I can click on each one to then go look at the actual article. For example, Eater here. This one was updated in April. They do this on a regular basis. Uh, they update this. So let's see, Cafe Chloe, Blind Lady, Blue Ribbon, Kaito Sushi, Carnita Snack Shack, that's a good place, Sushi Ota, Tender Greens, Wine Vault, Cucina Havana, Microsoft Bar, Wa Dining, Alcam, Starlight. Aquí está Soho. There's our client. Number 13 out of 38. 38 essential San Diego restaurants. Again, the number doesn't matter. Why 38? Who cares? It's a list. And so number 13, this, this client has been going up. They were in the 20s a couple of years ago, getting higher and higher. They're 13 now. They've got to keep doing what they're doing. And we've got to keep doing what we're doing about social media and such. They're going to keep climbing higher. So traditional barbacoa style lamb stuffed into tacos and enchiladas or on top of sopes or tostadas. In any form, it's delicious. The Travel Channel's Andrew Zimmerman agrees. Again, popularity breeds popularity. It was a great fortune that we were able to connect or the client was able to connect with a prominent foodie in Los Angeles who had connection a connection to Andrew Zimmern of Travel Channel. He came in 2012 and recorded an episode about San Diego and one of the restaurants he ate at was this client. That has then been building again. Popularity breeds popularity. There have been 
two other food shows that have filmed at that restaurant this year in the last two months. There was one that filmed at the end of last year. So obviously that's very lofty. You want to be featured on, on, on TV, you want to be featured on a, on a real magazine and so forth, but that takes time and effort. It takes your content, it takes your product, it takes your social media to get your attention and your fame. And then now that there's some fame here, that's creating more fame. We had um, you know, a Canadian barbecue show coming in to record last uh, November or so. The episode should be airing very, very soon, this month, I think, in time for, for barbecue season. So this particular article then shows shows off this client the point that now that I know that I've got a good link then I would go over to our Facebook or our Pinterest and I would share this article not our own thing this article from some other third party site I'd be I'm hyping that link I'm making a link to the link from my company social media or my personal that'd be fine too I'm sharing this particular post because then our friends and followers and, and likers on social media would see it, they might like it, they might share it, their friends and family see this article, their friends and family then follow the link back to the site. And again, creating more links, more traffic, popularity breeds popularity. So this is where you see what are your links in Bing. This screen, I think, is a little cumbersome, meaning you can't really organize what you're looking at. You can choose to export, and that'll download a, an Excel file. With that Excel file, then you can organize and highlight and make notes and all of that, and that's something that we do for clients. We download this list of links. We update it on a monthly basis. We, we see what's new, what's changed. We make notes. For example, this is a bad link. Disavow it. We highlight a link in red, perhaps, if we want to really promote it. We, you know, highlight it in blue to be a to-do for next month. But all of this data we get from these webmaster tools from Bing and Google for free. You just need to create the account and link the webmaster tool to your website. Right here, it gave me a list of everything. Foodmarathon.com.wordpress. So some, uh, perhaps some smaller time blogger link to the site. Great. We're getting we're getting notice from big people, small people, and then I would then uh, post something on on Facebook um, about that particular link, and then that'll give them traffic, which will then could get us traffic. So that's where you look at your links in Bing um, to see what the good links are. In Bing, we can then go to, let's see, where did they put it? Disavow links, right here. It's under configure my site. And again, it's on the notes that I gave last week, so you can refer to them, disavow links. The way this works is, let's say you find a bad a bad site like pick2fly.com. What that one is basically is one of these kinds of sites that are becoming more popular. Unfortunately, uh, I would call them link uh, content scraping sites. These are sites that exist to browse the web, find content, and basically steal it and put it on their own site because then they're trying to create. A, a, an image search engine or a restaurant search engine or a menu search engine. They're just stealing other people's content, putting it on their own content, on their own site, and, and linking it and so forth. But this is a bad spam site. So when we browse our links, we saw, we did. how did I know it's bad? I followed the link and I checked out the site. I ne had never heard of it. I followed the site, I vetted it, I looked at it, and I said, this is a spam site. 
and you'll be able to tell that with more experience. I found that it's a bad site. I go to this screen, and then I say here, that domain, get rid of it. So bad review site.com. Whatever bad website I find, I say that whole domain, disavow it. Everything on that site is bad, don't pay attention to it. Usually you'll do the domain. Yes? Now, what if, um, because since we've done this, since we're doing this, I just know there are like three uh, bad, uh, they're not sites, but they're like, they're part of my sites. And they're saying amateur form or something like that within my site, and I put that there. So if I dis uh, disavow, how do I do that? Within so your own it, site? Huh? It, it, and that's those bad things are on your site? Yeah. That might be a deeper issue that perhaps your site is hacked. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be disavowing your own site. That would be very bad. You're going to perhaps figure out, I think somewhere over here it'll tell you diagnostics. Um, security? Malware. Check your security option here under malware and it might tell you you've got some some spam or malware attached to your site. So if you've got this stuff in your site that obviously you never wrote, there might be something deeper problem with your site, that your got, site got hacked, your password was stolen, something might have happened. So how does WordPress not get hacked? Well, um, you have to, that's a deeper uh, discussion to have, but that you have to practice good password security, you have to know who has your passwords, because maybe you have the best security, but if you've got seven authors that have access to your site and they don't practice good security, if they send the password via email, email is the worst thing that you can do. You, you should not be emailing people your password because email goes through the internet naked. There is no security on email, if you didn't know that. Okay, I didn't know that. Now, see, I just pressed malware instead of being denied by any harmful elements on your site. We'll also be able to check it on, on Google because not every kind of malware shows up on all the <coughs> tool toolboxes. Um, so that might be a deeper issue to, to, to figure out, unfortunately. So again, we can look at it during the lab time. This disavow links is very useful to, to distance yourself from the bad links. And usually you're going to use domain. You could say page. So that could be that bad reviews, bad, bad review site.com slash blog slash restaurants.html. Perhaps that one file is bad. Unlikely. The whole site usually is a bad website just churning out junk. So it's very unlikely that you're just going to say that one page is bad. You could have a directory which is, well, everything in the blog is bad. Again, doubtful. The whole site is probably going to be bad. These spam these spammers are not going to be crafting a website that is just going to be one parts of it are going to be spammy. The whole thing's going to be spammy. Uh, so you're going to set that usually to the whole domain, the whole .com or .net or .biz or whatever. The whole thing is bad. We click disavow, and then Bing will start the process to deal with it so that that link no longer affects your SEO. How long does it take? It depends. Depends on how big your site is how much traffic it's got, other factors. This could be applied within a day, it could be applied within two weeks or more. So that was looking at um, Bing Toolbox to look at where are, our, where are our incoming links and how to disavow the bad ones. Any questions on that? Those would be separate. It would be telling you different things to fix. Uh, and now, perhaps also because you've just made those changes within a week, it might not know about those changes just yet. It also takes time for Bing to reanalyze your site and see if you've followed the rules. One way to perhaps speed it up is to, if you're using sitemaps, uh, you could resubmit the sitemap. But that should be doing it by itself anyway. So you've got sitemap on top here, and then you could tell it to resubmit it. You could also 
somewhere here is submit. Oh, here it is, submit URL. You could um, back go back up to configure site submit URL and and put that put that particular page that you fixed, submit it to them again, and say, hey, look at it again. They'll get to it eventually. But they've got millions of sites to deal with. If you resubmit your site map or resubmit an address, a particular address, it, sh it should hopefully help speed that up a bit. But one week I still think is way too soon to, to start to do this yet. Fix those other issues and then wait a little time, maybe a week or two more, and then see what has changed and then perhaps try this. Yes? I have the inbound link screen up and it says I have 172, but I couldn't get any of the further information. Is that because it's new? I just started collecting data? I have to look up exactly why sometimes that happens. My uh, it has nothing underneath target page. It has mm -hmm. no data available. But you've got some stuff in the chart the number here. Number says yeah, I have 184. Yeah, I have to look up why that happens sometimes. I don't know if anyone else knows. It has some Bing experience. Sometimes we get a uh, we get some data right here that we've got links, but then we don't get any of these. I'm not right. exactly sure why that happens. It might be because it already knows that those are low quality spam sites, so it doesn't even show it and they're not hurting your your SEO so you don't have to disavow. I have to look up why sometimes that happens, that it seems to show data but not really. So if these were individual people reading the blogs, then they would not be one of those big sites. So maybe that's who that, who that is. Well, individual people reading your site would be hits. They wouldn't really exactly be links. They'd be hits. What if they were links from like Pinterest? Would that be a link? That's still a link, and you would see somewhere here that there's a there's a link from Pinterest. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to go over to Google Analytics. Again, you can follow along, or you can do this also. I'm going to show you some information on Google Analytics. That's at google.com slash analytics. So if you set up Google Analytics, so mine's always set up as a company, so we've, we deal with a lot of people's websites, you're probably just going to have one, one of these little folders, which is known as an account. Remember the weird terminology. Google Analytics calls these folders accounts. And within an account, you can have multiple properties. For example, on this particular uh, client, this is the account, vmsync.net, and then the accounts are the main website and the YouTube. That's what we're tracking. On this other particular one, we could have um, the account, VM Campos, and then the property, DeviantArt, the main website, the blog, and the YouTube. So we can track that data. These are the properties inside of an account. Google Analytics is pretty complicated. I'll try and talk about it as much as we can in the time. But um, under reporting, well, I'm, I'm going to look at an example, another client. If you, if you click on, uh, it's either going to say all website data or a particular name. If you click on all website data or the name of your particular site, then it takes you over to the reporting screen. So we've got home screen that shows you all of your sites, reporting screen which shows you all of the data for each of the sites, customization because there's so much data you can customize it into one particular nice screen, and then admin where you check if this is properly set up, add more users, set conversion goals and other stuff. So if you want other people to be able to access the data, you can add them under user management. Well, you see user management under account, user management under property. What's the difference? Let's say on a particular account that is has access to five properties, YouTube and Pinterest and the website and the blog. 
but you only need to give access to the Pinterest data. So I would not put a user here because then you would have access to the whole account, all five of those properties. I would select in the properties column, give them access to the YouTube, to the Pinterest data here. So you can fine tune who has access to what data. A lot of you might not really need to know about this because you're the only person managing this. But if you have other people in your organization that's going to look at this data or manage it, you want to add users, and then you want to be perhaps specifically telling them what kind of data they can use or view. Everything or targeted. That's what the admin screen is. The reporting screen on the left side has a lot of sections. A lot of sections. Um, I won't be able to talk about them all, but the big ones that I can talk about at the moment, I'm going to skip around, but under acquisition, this is all of the information of where you acquired your traffic. Where did your traffic come from? Each of these sections has an overview. So this would be the overview of audience. This is the overview of behavior. If we look at the overview of acquisition, this little pie chart here shows where this client is getting their traffic from. This blue one here is organic search, 36%. So that's with people just doing a Google search just regular search. 36% of traffic comes with orga from organic search. 33% comes from social media. So people on Facebook, people on Twitter, etc. That's driving traffic to the site. Then we've got 20% direct traffic, meaning the person just went to the site directly, they typed the address directly, which is interesting because that address is pretty hard to spell and remember italianissimotrat.com but enough people like the site enough that in this time period 21 percent visited the site directly they could have bookmarked the site on their web browser and just clicked back on their bookmark and it goes directly to the site that's direct traffic and then we've got referral traffic that's traffic that this client is getting from another site this other site is referring them fancy word but this other site is linking to our site, to the client site. There is a fifth one that you might see which would be paid. So AdWords, pay-per-click campaigns, and all of that. This client is not engaging in any of that. They're not paying for, they're not engaging in any paid campaigns. It's all organic. It's all social media. And also a flyer in the Union Tribune, and a, also a radio ad, or whatever. Google Analytics obviously can't track that, can't track if your radio ad helped you, because it's not set up for that. But this will tell you your traffic that you're getting from Google search, from uh, social media, from a direct link. I believe there's also one here that it would show you from an email link, if you have email campaigns. So within the 30 days, at the very top right, you can set a time horizon. This is 30 days. I can say, okay, show me a little bit more. Uh, show me in the last, uh, well, I can say show me between April, so show me in the last three months. In the last three months, 38% organic, 32% social, 19% direct, and 10% referral. Can you explain how much those direct referral? Direct is that someone went to the site directly from the address, like they bookmarked it on their web browser and they went to it directly. Referral is that it's coming from someone else's website. These are your backlinks, basically, referrals. And then social, obviously, is social media. And organic is someone did a search. They found the page, they found the site on the search results page, and then they clicked. Okay, so this is the overview in acquisition. 
I can then go in to get more detail. There's overview, then there's all traffic, channels, tree maps, referrals. Um, the, the one I believe that's the most valuable for you to make a note of and, and look at under all traffic, so this is acquisition, all traffic, referrals. This will then tell you exactly what are the links from those other sites. So you get this chart down at the bottom here, here's the source. A link from Yelp, a link from TripAdvisor, a link from vmsync.net, a link from Facebook, Google Maps. Well, exactly how many? 167 links from Yelp. So here, SEM is in play. A lot of traffic is coming from Yelp, search engine marketing. What are you doing outside of your website? This client is taking advantage of Yelp. The client has, has claimed their Yelp profile, has optimized it, is active. They respond to people that might give a bad review or a good review. So if you're a business owner, uh, how many of you have a Yelp profile for your business? Okay. Um, actually, all of you should be raising your hands because if you never created it, probably someone else did. So if you didn't create your Yelp profile, look yourself up on Yelp, you probably have a profile. Someone created it either to give you some very good replies or some not very good replies. If you don't have good comments on Yelp, then you've got to get on, on the train and you've got to claim your profile, start to respond to some of these negative comments, and that's the customer service that will hopefully turn that one-star review maybe into a three-star review, maybe four, maybe five. Way better than a one-star or two-star. So I'm seeing here $100seo.com. Does that sound like legitimate traffic? No. So that's something that needs to be disavowed. BestSEOoffer.com. Does that sound good? No. Buttonsforyourwebsite.com. No. These you're st you should hopefully see that the this is the mark of, of a bad site. What do those three sites that I just mentioned have in common? Dashes in the file names. Now I'm not saying yours in the address. I'm not saying that you're that you're a spammer just because you have a dash in your in your name. Maybe you really wanted to get eastlakebakers.com. That was taken five years ago. So you settle for eastlake-bakers.com. It might not be the most helpful to have those dashes in your name because they're becoming much more associated with spam sites. So you have to evaluate if you read the SEO 2015 and beyond and the SEO checklist, they talk in there about you don't need to get your address with your keywords anymore. So buttons for your website is so literal. They have those keywords, website, button. Best SEO offer. Again, that's keyword stuffing. It's just trying to get the keywords that that spammer thinks will be helpful, and they're stuffing it into their address there. And that's showing low quality. I yes. That's a new one that's starting to crop up. That one's bad. That's a bad. So you would go in and disavow it. Yeah. Okay. What happens if you don't disavow it? If you've got a lot of links that are bad, that could then pull pull your rankings down. So if you if you leave them alone, uh, because again, guilty by association, guilty until proven innocent, shoot first, ask questions later, the search engines are going to see, oh, there's a bunch of these spam sites linking to this other site. It must be spam also. So you're going to get dragged down. We're getting to that in one moment. What about the circle like M Facebook? What is the M? It's mobile. Oh, okay. This so is just the mobile. It, okay. It's just the mobile version of Facebook. M Yelp? It's the mobile version. It's the mobile version of Yelp. So, so yes, uh, negative SEO. You could be getting dragged down because you've got all of these sites linking to your site. You would never know that. You've, you've been trying 
you're, you've been trying your hardest to run your social media and such. You've been writing great blog content, and you're still are not cracking. You're not getting past page seven. Um, it could be that these bad sites are bringing you down. We've seen how to disavow in Bing. To disavow in Google, actually, you have to jump through more hoops. The reason is because Google is the biggest search engine. You could hurt yourself if you disavow the wrong site. Let's say that maybe $100 SEO.com is a legitimate site, and you choose to disavow, you just lost a lot of traffic. So they don't, they don't give you any button anywhere to get to disavow directly. It's in my notes, but you can get to it by doing a Google search. Google disavow disavow links. Do a Google search to find the Google disavow tool link. It's, it's hidden. It's in your webmaster tools, but there's no way to get to it that I've seen um, because it's so powerful. It could hurt your SEO pretty bad. They make it hidden. Not only is that a hurdle, once I show you how to actually do it, that's an even bigger hurdle. So hopefully you found it. You can write that address down. That's a direct address. I never remember that, but I remember how to Google search. So once you find disavow tool, disavow links tool from Google, click it. We manage more than one site, so it says which of these sites would you like to disavow? Before I go further. There's a big warning here. If you believe your site's ranking is being harmed by low-quality links that you do not control, you can ask Google not to take them into account when assessing your site. You should still make every effort to clean up unnatural links pointing to your site. Simply disavowing them isn't enough. This is the part that I find laughable. Google is still going to tell us you should try to take care of these bad links before coming to us to tattletale. But those spam sites are not going to pay attention to you to a when you ask them, please remove your link to my site. They will say, oh, a real webmaster contacted us, therefore it's a real site, let's link some more. So if we click on more info, then we get a big essay about what this all is. Another big warning, this is an advanced feature, should only be used with caution. If used incorrectly, this feature can potentially harm your site's performance. Blah, 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 how does it actually work? You have to write in a simple text file, not in Word, in a simple text file like Notepad on Windows or TextEdit on the Mac, a very simple text file. You have to write, look at their example here, there's the pound symbol for you to write a note to Google to tell them. Example.com removed most links, but missed these. And then you write the links that are still spammy pointing to your site. And another comment. Contacted owner of ShadySEO.com on this date to ask for link removal, but got no response. And then it's written here, domain colon the bad website. So you have to try harder on Google. You have to write in a text file. These are the bad links. You have to write, I tried to contact them. I'm going to cover the microphone. I want to give you permission. You don't have to go in and try to get this taken down by the bad websites. Just write that you did. Okay. I'll believe you. And then you upload that file in this screen here. You have to create this basic text file. So for example, we uploaded one on February of this year that had a, a few of those sites uploaded. And then that is going to go toward helping the SEO. We're, we're telling Google this is a bad site. And if, if, I'm t if I'm saying $100 SEO.com is bad and you are too if it shows up on yours and you are too and everyone's doing it, well, Google's going to get the message eventually that a lot of people are disavowing the same link, so then eventually um, no one is going to get har harmed by that site. But some of these sites, you know, anyone can make a website whenever they want. So these spam sites appear are appearing all the time. 
if you then see your analytics and see that you're getting these weird negative sites, go ahead and do the disavow process, disallow process, and then uh, that's going to help you in the long term. One possibility is that they could be generating traffic because the, the, a new insidious one that I've seen is called something like um, they've taken a keyword from Google Analytics. I forget what it's called. Maybe like verifymysite.com. Some keyword that is in Google Analytics and that spam site is starting to link to people. If I'm not very savvy and I think, oh, this sounds like an official Google thing, I'm going to click it and get traffic to their site. The point of those sites getting traffic is then they can sell that site to other companies saying, look, our site generates a thousand hits a week by this site right now. Because there's so many get-rich-quick schemes also in SEO. And if I'm starting off, if, my, if I'm desperate to start off my company and start to get traffic, I might be lured by some of these companies that say, we'll get you a thousand links in a week because links help our site. Well, those links are coming from spam sites, so they're not going to help you. They're most likely going to hurt you. So these spam sites are just trying to generate traffic for the sake of generating traffic, most likely to sell that, to sell that traffic, to sell those mailing lists, to sell this, these ill-gotten goods to unsavvy uh, webmasters. Yes? What did you say we have to create the document in Notepad? Notepad. Okay. Here in Windows, if you go to the Start menu, if you click on the Start menu and type Notepad, you'll get the Notepad app. Notepad is a very, very, very basic text editor. It's like Word, but with Word you can do italics and highlighting and all of that stuff. Google does not want you to upload a Word file. They want a very basic text file. In Windows, it's Notepad. On the Mac, it's Text Edit. So I load Notepad. Not Notepad++. You're not going to have that at home. We have it on our computers here. You, on your Windows computer, most likely will just have Notepad. And then here you get very basic text file. And I'm going to write here, comment contacted $100seo.com to remove links, no response. And then I'll write domain colon $100-seo.com. And I can write as many as I want here. And then I save this file, I upload it on their screen, and they'll process it and work with it. And then eventually then that'll help your SEO. Do you hear back from them? No. It just applies or not. Most likely it'll apply. You don't hear you don't really hear back. At least my company hasn't, but we've seen the results. Can you just say contact the following links to remove? No, you should say That's each individual one. Yeah. On the same note, yes. So on this next one, I would write here also uh, filled out contact form at uh, get quick hits fast right now dot com. No response. And then domain, the one I just wrote. So you can have multiple domains in the file, but you should, for each particular domain, you should note each one. Maybe. Do you feel we need to change the wording from each? You can't just go to contact and contact and contact the person. Well, that's the funny thing. Again, I don't know why they put why Google puts so much of the burden on us. There's obviously millions of spam sites out there, and then I don't know why Google really makes us like do all of this hard work, of course these th these spam sites are not going to play fair. They're, they're not playing fair from the beginning. And to ask us to try to play fair with them, I think is stupid. Like if you're trying to have an argument, you know, a political argument with someone that's just going to be closed-minded, you're not going to change their opinion. So why am I going to try some tactics? Google wants us to do this. So I sort of feel, yeah, you should kind of write it like you've been trying. Okay, so just sort of mix it up a little bit. <clears throat> Once I've got that file, I can save it. And the way we do it is 
you can only have one file at a time. So you're going to be adding to the file every time. The way we do it is we save with the name of our site, because we deal with more than one site, and then the date. So I'm saving that as a plain old text file, not a DOC file, not a PDF, just plain text, .txt. Saving that, and then going back to the disav disavow screen and uploading it. Notice there's already been one uploaded in February. Disavow links, aquí este excoco, etc. So um, our process is we've already uploaded one. We found a few more spam sites this month when we do our monthly checkup. So we would log back in here. It's already saved in our Dropbox, but then we can download it and add to it. So basically you want to keep adding to the file. It's going to grow. You're going to keep adding to it. You can only have one file at a time. And so therefore, if you uploaded a version that didn't have the one from last month, that one might creep back into the results. So if you, if you keep it updating it, it will, uh, it will supersede the, the old ones. So that's how you do it in Google. Obviously more steps, more hurdles, but um, they're the bigger search engine, so they're trying to protect you against you hurting your own SEO. And we discovered what our links are by going to that referrals screen in the acquisition screen of Google Analytics. Does anyone have, if you manage to set this up, does anyone have any links on that screen if you're on this screen? A few people? Okay. So again, you're, you won't know this until you set it up. <clears throat> Make sure it's working, and then you'll get all this great data. Again, I, I can't quite go into every screen here because we've got a lot to cover in one day, but that's one of the most important screens. We've also got social little screen on social that will show where the traffic is coming from under social overview a lot of traffic comes from Yelp second is TripAdvisor then Facebook then Urban Swim then Foursquare notice this restaurant is getting a lot of traffic from a lot of these review sites a lot of these travel sites a lot of these restaurant sites and then Facebook within this time period so seven views from Facebook seven hits from Facebook but most hits from Yelp so if you are a business owner, any business, goods or services, you should check if your company is on Yelp. If it's not, you can preemptively create it and already start to craft your message on Yelp. If it's already been created, you, what you'll need to do is go through the process of claiming your profile so that you have access to add nice pictures, edit the biography, answer negative comments, and answer positive comments. So we're going to take a break, one more break at the moment. Any general questions about what we've looked at here? Okay, so it's 11.37. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 11.47.